right now live at five move-in day delayed why umd will be kicking off the school year virtually classes are looking a little bit different this year at lake superior college we'll explain and shooting investigation. Wisconsin's governor is activating the National Guard after a black man was shot by police and unrest hits the state. Plus, another rally. A big group gathers in Nashwalk as they urge the state not to shut down the prison in Togo. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from UMD where we are following developing news related to student move-in dates. But first, the latest on the officer-involved shooting in Wisconsin. Good evening, I'm Anthony Mack. Kristen is on assignment tonight. Thanks for joining us. An investigation is underway after cell phone video shows police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, shooting a black man in the back multiple times as he leaned into a vehicle. 29-year-old victim Jacob Blake is currently being treated in a Milwaukee hospital and is in serious condition. Angry protests led to an overnight curfew between Milwaukee and Chicago. Jerrica Duncan reports from New York and a quick warning. Some of the images we are about to show you are graphic and may disturb some. This video shows the aftermath of the encounter between Jacob Blake and officers in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Emotions ran high after police fired at least seven shots Sunday evening. Blake appears to have been shot in the back as he entered the driver's side of an SUV at gunpoint. His children were reportedly in the vehicle. It is unclear whether police believe they saw a weapon. I never had a problem with him. I always see him every day. Parks right behind me on the street. Local reports suggest Blake was breaking up a fight between two women when the police were called. That part of the incident was not caught on camera. A large number of protesters confronted officers in Kenosha Sunday night. In addition to peaceful demonstrations, at least one police officer was reportedly attacked when protests turned ugly elsewhere. A countywide curfew was put in place overnight. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers released a statement saying, We stand with all those who have and continue to demand justice, equity, and accountability for black lives in our country. Zach Rodriguez, a board supervisor in Kenosha County, said this incident highlights the need for more widespread use of recording devices by police. What happened here tonight uh, highlights that, that we, we need body cameras for not just our sheriff's deputies, but our city police department as well. One person who says they're a member of the local Black Lives Matter chapter says the video is just the latest in a long line of events of police brutality against black Americans. We're tired of it. And right now, this is the wrong generation that this is happening to. The frustration is boiling to the top, and we're sick and tired. Meanwhile, Governor Evers has called in the National Guard to keep the peace in Kenosha. He called it a limited mobilization. The Guard members will assist local law enforcement. They'll be focused on protecting critical infrastructure like police and fire departments. They'll also be working to ensure people can assemble safely. Evers spoke in support of everyone's First Amendment right to make their voices heard, but asked people to keep protests peaceful and wear a mask. Governor Evers is also calling lawmakers into a special session to pass law enforcement reforms. In a press conference today, Evers called racism a public health crisis. The package of reforms he wants lawmakers to pass includes setting use of force standards, banning chokeholds and no-knock warrants, and requiring de-escalation training. He says most Wisconsinites support the reforms and he shouldn't have to call a special session to get the work done. Leaders show up. Leaders do the work that needs to be done and that the people demand of them. But we cannot wait for Republican leadership to show up for work because clearly they intend to keep us waiting. The special session is set to start at noon on August 31st. Republican Assembly leaders say they're creating their own task force to examine police policies and standards, racial disparities, and public safety. Just seven days before the start of the semester, a major shakeup for UMD students. After a three-hour discussion, the University of Minnesota Board of Regents voted this morning to start all UMD's undergraduate classes online for at least two weeks and delay move-in. They're hoping this will prevent major COVID-19 outbreaks that other campuses across the nation are already dealing with. CBS 3's Ryan Coplin joins us live from UMD's campus with more on what this means for students tonight. Ryan. 
Tony, good evening to you. In just a couple of days, this campus, which has been quiet since students moved out back in mid-March, will stay quiet for a little longer. Students were supposed to be moving back on campus starting Wednesday, but today's decision by the Board of Regents pushes that out by two weeks. That's also how long undergraduate undergraduate classes will be held online. UMD professors had been planning for a hybrid learning model with some classes meeting online and others in person. This announcement comes after University of Minnesota President Joan Gable suggested the idea in an email to students and staff last week. UMD Chancellor Lendley Black says their prep work should allow them to change plans quickly. We've been spending the summer um, preparing for um, uh, uh, possibilities of online instruction, uh, remote instruction, and other modalities. Uh, so we do have a, a jump on this in a way we did not have back in March. Today's decision not only affects UMD's campus, but also the University of Minnesota campuses in the Twin Cities and Rochester. Board of Regent members said tuition will remain the same for online classes. There is no word on just how much the Duluth campus expects to be losing out financially when it comes to dining or any other on-campus facilities. Now coming up tonight at 10, we'll hear from those students impacted by this decision from earlier this afternoon. Now, Ryan, you mentioned the changes for undergrad students. What about med students or UMD's other grad students? What does this mean for the start of classes for them? Yeah, this decision today doesn't impact grad or professional programs. We spoke to a pharmacy student earlier today who had already been uh, attending labs in person for a couple weeks. He says some of his classes are still being held online to make up for that learning. All right, Ron Campo live for us tonight. Thanks, Ryan. Right now, a group of community members are rallying on the range to keep the prison in Togo open. Minnesota's Department of Corrections announced this summer that its facilities in Togo and Willow River would be closing. They hoped it will make up for a multi-million dollar budget deficit. But some in the community are upset as both locations are home to a program that helps get prisoners back on track. CBS 3's John Cardinelli joins us live at the rally in Nashwalk. John, how are things going out there tonight? Tony, we're here at the pavilion in Nashwalk. This event started around 30 minutes ago, and there's well over 100 people here. And as you mentioned, the Togo facility is home to the Challenge Incarceration Program, which is a boot camp style program that helps prisoners get back onto their feet. And the program and its 68 inmates would move when the Togo prison closes, but around 48 workers are expected to lose their jobs. Local lawmakers are worried that could create a ripple effect as small businesses in the surrounding area already struggling due to the pandemic. Right now, public officials, state representatives, and those who work at the prison are all speaking, hoping their voices will be heard at the state capitol. On the other hand, corrections department officials say this plan has the least overall long-term impact. And Tony, coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear from those here today that do not want to see this program go away. Mm, we'll keep following this one. Lots of developments as we go along here. John Cardinelli live for us tonight. Thanks, John. And just a reminder, both the Togo and Willow River prisons are expected to close in the next year. Dave's here for weather. Dave, after some cloudy and muggy and kind of cool and just a real weird weekend, we got some sunshine today. For most towns. Yeah. And that's kind of weird as well because Wisconsin faces a chance for some rain this evening. While the rest of us get at least partial sunshine and some inland towns are on the muggy side. Some lakeside places are a little bit cooler. But if you take a look at Blackjack Mountain out there by Besmer, it's gorgeous. That ski hill covered with green forest right now. Some folks already getting a hankering for autumn and then winter and a little bit of skiing, but that isn't going to happen anytime soon. Temperatures will be reasonably sunny and summery this week, except for a couple of exceptions. And those exceptions will be brought by that warm front tonight, which is the reason and the trigger for the rain that could approach places like Hayward. Tomorrow in general, the high pressure will have a hold of most of us during the day, but at night, the main body of the low could bring in a chance for some rain. So our Tuesday day planner says partly cloudy during the daylight hours. Then when you get back home tomorrow evening, a 20% rain chance, which will double in odds by Wednesday. Wednesday could be one of the better chances for rain this week. Will there be any others? I'll show you with the seven-day forecast in just a bit. Thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, a fascinating sneak peek into the lives of Red Cliff Wildlife, plus what ESCO parents can expect as they prepare to send their kids back to school. City by City is coming up next. And tonight at 6, we are continuing our coverage of the developing situation in Kenosha, Wisconsin. 
You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Vant, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. DBS, your all-things basement company. Does your home have uneven or sloping floors? How about cracked drywall, stair-stepping cracks, or bowed basement walls? You may have a problem with your foundation. Call the specialists at DBS. They thoroughly inspect your property and provide a permanent solution to your foundation problem. We offer a fully transferable warranty, unmatched in our area. Contact DBS, your all-things basement company, for a free, no-obligation estimate. Call or visit us online. DBS, helping your family have a healthy, safe, and comfortable home. Mediacom's fiber-powered broadband network was built for the future, and it's in your community. Delivering gigabit speeds to every home and business we serve, we'll be one of the first in the nation to take you to 10G, making your community one of the fastest in the world. The foundation is in place, and Mediacom will be making way for brilliant possibilities, igniting economic development, and lighting up communities nationwide. Tune in Saturday mornings for the Link Ford lineup, where we will show you amazing vehicles on our lot, like this 2017 Ford Taurus SEL, with a remote start, a backup camera, and more for just $314 a month. Or check out this 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 LT for only $399 a month. Want to see more? Then be sure to watch this Saturday. Visit us online at linkmotors.com or stop by either one of our two locations to view our complete inventory. Link Ford, where reputation is everything. Enhance your quality of life. Increase your mobility. Achieve your potential. For specialized individualized care, call Northern Orthotic and Prosthetic Center, providing the professional care you deserve. Northern Orthotic and Prosthetic Center, serving people throughout Northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Upper Michigan. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look over Lake Superior as we head into the week. Dave Anderson will have our full weather forecast in just a few minutes, but first, let's take a look around the region. From wildlife in Red Cliff to a special hunting season in Grand Rapids, that and more as we take you around the Northland city by city. Starting off in Red Cliff, where a newly installed trail cam system is giving us a special peek into the daily lives of the reservation wildlife. These pictures were captured uh, from cameras installed by the Tribal Wildlife Manager. The cameras have tracked a variety of different species that call the Red Cliff Reservation home, including a brand new wolf pack that moved in last spring. And speaking of wildlife, we're heading to Grand Rapids, where the city will once again hold its special deer hunt. Now in its eighth season, the purpose of the hunt is to control the surrounding population and prevent deer from entering city limits. You can find the state guidelines for the hunt on the Grand Rapids City website. And finally, in ESCO, the school board has approved adopting the Minnesota Public Schools Safe Learning Plan. The plan prioritizes the safety of students and staff and outlines a plan for younger students to continue in-person learning. The school board is scheduled to have a virtual meeting tomorrow where the plan will be discussed in greater detail. That meeting is open to the public. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, go ahead and send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, students returning to LSC this fall are going to have some adjusting to do. September is getting closer, but that doesn't mean summer has slipped away yet. Current temp at the airport, 81 degrees, and we should be semi-summery for the rest of the week. And of course, that heat could trigger some thunderstorms. I'll talk about when they could be coming, coming up after our break. Ask real customers what they really love about Spectrum Internet and TV. Spectrum Internet has the fastest speeds for everything I do. There is no turning wheel. It's immediate. Spectrum is the fastest. Bam. 
<laughs> Get the fastest download speech with the most reliable performance with Spectrum Internet, delivering starting speeds of 100 megabits. That's more than enough for all your devices for $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. I can't get over how much on-demand Spectrum has. I can literally watch a new movie every night. I got all my shows, and he's got all his shows. With the Spectrum TV app, I can watch live TV anywhere. It's perfect. Add Spectrum TV and enjoy more free HD and more free on-demand. Plus, use the Spectrum TV app to watch live TV on the go. All from $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. The fact that they don't have contracts, that says a lot about their service. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. Install Spectrum services yourself. Get a self-installation kit shipped right to your home. Call 833-906-4499. I've got one for you. See, you care. Health plan demystifiers and sleeve roller uppers. You care. Health plan demystifiers and sleeve roller uppers. <laughs> Sounds so good when you say it. 96% of all providers accept you care because they rock so hard. 96% of all providers accept you care because they ride so hard. <laughs> Can we pull over? What's our tagline? You care people powered health plans. So good. Watch Dave, Caitlin, and Austin for local weather you can trust on CBS. The 2020 Yamaha XTR Editions at RJ Sport and Cycle. Coming up Tuesday on CBS 3 this morning, a recap of tonight's installment of the Republican National Convention. And it's going to be a pretty nice day for our Tuesday boat. I am tracking some more showers and thunderstorms in the forecast, so I'll have those details. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Jim Peralt. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Here's a live look at what's going on at Jay Cook State Park. You know, we have this network of these live cameras to look at, and some of them get out of phase, and they look pretty terrible. For a while, the Jay Cook one had gone all purple. It was very existential, very artistic, but not very realistic. Now things have been straightened out, and frankly, it's gorgeous. Sunshine, warm temperatures, very summery. And like I've been saying here today, temperatures should stay pretty summery for the week ahead. Maybe by the end of the next seven days, they'll start to tumble a little bit, but from now until then... Par for the course for August, and of course, a little bit of heat aggravates the atmosphere. Some folks in Wisconsin have a chance for some showers and storms tonight. And then come tomorrow night, we get the lead elements of our next go-around, which could come around on Wednesday especially. And we'll talk all about that with our seven-day forecast after we look at the current conditions, again, that are coming in from Duluth International. Still 81, didn't change in the last three minutes. Relative humidity is pretty dry at 39%. Westerly, northwesterly winds going 6 miles per hour, and our air pressure is on the higher side at 29.97 inches of mercury. Current temperatures around the region in the 70s for some towns. For example, 77s from Watersmeet to Ironwood, 80s for a lot of other places, 80 in Hayward, 82 Ashland, even 82 in Superior, not cooler by the lake there today. Upper 70s for Moose Lake, lower 80s even creeping towards the North Shore today, 81. So two harbors in Silver Bay, upper 70s, Vermilion Range, Masabi Range, about 80 degrees or so, 81 degrees towards Borderland. Similar temperatures probably through tomorrow. And tomorrow, well, clouds will start to increase and we'll start to get a more region-wide chance of rain by tomorrow night. But right now, there's a warm front working up from the southwest, and that's what could be the leader element there that could create some showers and storms for parts of northern Wisconsin here tonight. Right now, it looks like everything's well out of the range of our region, but if you live in places like Hayward, keep in mind you just might see a little bit of action tonight, about a 30% chance for that. Otherwise, clear to partly cloudy because of higher pressure that's holding on for a little while longer. Much of the day Tuesday then should be dry from the high pressure, but Tuesday night into Wednesday, things will change as that low from the Dakotas comes around. Chance for thunderstorms could go towards 40%, which in turn will give way towards sunshine perhaps uh, by Thursday, thanks to a high pressure system wedged in between a couple of lows. So a bit of a weather seesaw this week. Wednesday we get the rain, Thursday a bit of sun. The next low could bring back a 50% chance for rain by Friday, in turn giving way to sunshine on Saturday. And we'll show you those days with the seven day. Here we go tonight in Minnesota. Low temps about 59 to 63. Partly cloudy sky there into Wisconsin and Michigan. You've got a 30% chance for showers and storms, especially in the central parts, uh, roughly Hayward area.
So getting into tomorrow's forecast for Wisconsin and Michigan, partly sunny day, night rain possible, about a 20% chance, high is 77 to 82. Minnesota highs go from 70 on the North Shore to 80 farther inland, partly cloudy day and night rain possible. Uh, it's only a 20% chance Tuesday night, like I mentioned, but then it becomes a 40% shot on Wednesday. And there's the roller coaster, Tony. It goes away on Thursday. Comes back again on Friday with its little brother because it's a 50% shot. And then for the weekend, it calms down, and it also cools down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we start summery, like I've been saying, yeah. but we just might finish a little less summery. Yeah. I don't want to say autumn-y because that's okay. still too early. <laughs> it's still a little too early for that. But, mm -hmm. hey, we're used to roller coaster weather. At least here in Duluth, that was the case all weekend. We had fog, yeah. and it was cool, and then it was hot, and it was humid, and then it was rainy, and it was just <laughs> the, whole, the whole bag. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was, Toads. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. St. Luke's has opened a new milk depot to help coordinate breast milk donations. St. Luke's partnered with the Minnesota Milk Bank for Babies in an effort to connect donors' breast milk with infants in Minnesota. Being a donation site allows mothers in Duluth to drop off their extra breast milk at St. Luke's Pediatric Associates. The main recipients of donated milk are babies who are uh, the most vulnerable and at risk. You can find more information on our website. Northland College students went back to school today, and they were met with some drastic changes brought on by COVID-19. CBS3's Leanne Valdez visited Lake Superior College to see how they've adapted. Lake Superior College has been prepping for the first day of classes since March, but the students I spoke with Monday say things are noticeably different, yet they are still excited to be back in school. LSC's new COVID restriction plan includes added hand sanitizers at every corner of the school. Classes are even smaller than they already were. The school is only allowed 25 or fewer students in each class at a time per state recommendations. Students not only have to wear masks, but they also have to fill out an online screening questionnaire before they enter the building asking about their temperature and other COVID-19 related questions. Those with LSC say they're staying on top of every health and safety recommendation, but in the end, everyone must do their part. We feel good. We feel confident because we've been doing this this summer. Um, that said, it's, we just keep reminding our students and, and they've been fantastic about it, but it's really it's, it's on all of us to keep ourselves safe, to keep yourself safe. The way students buy books is also different this year. Students have to line up outside the bookstore, hand an employee their book list, and wait until the books are gathered. Fanning says that things change day by day, so they are going to keep coming out with new plans if need be. Thanks, Leanne. And coming up, uh, we catch up with students to see how they're handling the changes. Meanwhile, as students head back to campuses all across the country, the University of Wisconsin system is encouraging them to play by the pandemic's rules. Now the state is asking for bar and restaurant owners' help. Interim UW President Tommy Thompson and the Tavern League and Restaurant Association leaders sent a letter to those owners today. It asks them to make sure students are social distancing and wearing masks while out at restaurants and bars. University leaders hope this will help curb COVID-19 cases on campus. Still to come, as more states make masks mandatory, many are finding ways to turn a necessity into an accessory. The Garage. It's your space. Get a garage fit for man's best friend with our doghouse 34 by 26 garage. Store all of the equipment you need today. No matter what you put in your space, trust us to build it right. Economy Garages. Build right. Price right. Thank you for virtual family dinners and long-distance birthday wishes. Thank you for sweet streaming melodies and spontaneous dance parties. Thank you for keeping classrooms together and learning alive. Thank you to our incredible network of employees who make all these beautiful connections possible. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the DW crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on social media and discoverwisconsin.com for behind-the-scenes content and great Wisconsin giveaways, including a chance to win a free vacation. This week's featured prize package could take you to Ripon. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details.
Here at locally owned Adolfson Real Estate, we are ready to help you find the home of your dreams with no extra fees. Take a look at this beautiful home with a nice open floor plan in Cloquet. Please call our Cloquet office for more details. Call us today to schedule a tour at Adolfson Real Estate. Uh oh. What? I think I forgot to lock my Buick. Parallel parking. The hot yoga was so hot. Check this out. Cooling seats? Alexa, ask Buick to start my SUV. You can do that? You can do that? You can't do that. You can with the Buick. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Now everyone can get GM employee pricing on most 2020 Buick SUV models. Use it to get over 7,000 total value on this Envision. Work hard for your money and deserve to see it go the extra mile. Join us Wednesday mornings and hear from local experts on tips to better manage your finances in Eye on Money on Live Local CBS3. Brought to you by MPPL Financial. Tonight, get ready for love in lockdown. I'm coming to Love Island to find my one. My honey in the I'm excited. I'm ready for love. <laughs> Make me feel like a princess. I love that. You're in such a unique situation. 24 hours a day, you can definitely fall in love with somebody. And if we can vibe, then I'm like, let's get married. <laughs> Escape to Love Island, new season tonight, 8, 7 central on CBS. One young Iron Range man's fight for life-saving medication is an uphill battle. It's very stressful. It's, you know, you're, every time I talk to him, it's like, oh, how are you doing? You're hoping for that, that answer. Like, yeah, I feel great, but it's never there. It's hard. Just kind of have to hope it happens, hope they approve it. As drug prices soar and insurance falls through. There's always positives out of everything, even if it's not so good. Hear Colton's story Thursday at 10. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Some health experts say face masks can help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Now, some people are wearing them with a sense of style. Nancy Chen looks at how face mask fashion and accessories have taken off. The necessary accessory of the summer has turned this San Antonio car salesman into an unlikely style inspiration. These are most all, all the ones now. Steve Montgomery went viral after matching his ties and face masks which his girlfriend sews from pocket squares. I've got over 107 ties, but mask I'm still working on. I think we've got like up to 20 now. So I have not worn the same mask since I started this. And how long ago was that? Uh, three weeks ago, I believe. Big brands are offering their own fashions for face masks, including designer Tori Birch. David's Bridal has a line of masks devoted to brides and grooms. And then there's this. An Israeli company calls it the most expensive face mask in the world with 3,600 diamonds valued at $1.5 million. People are finding much more affordable designs online. More than 29 million masks were sold on Etsy in April, May, and June, enough to cover the distance between New York and London, and then some. Face mask accessories are also popular. Samantha Katz sells chains that hold masks when people take them off. You just have your mask, and then you have your accessories, so you just can put it behind you, in front of you. They start at $20 and come in a variety of styles. It kind of completes a look, like a necklace might complete a look, or a headband or a hat. Now your face mask accessories go into you as well. Katz says the designs help people express themselves, even while covering their face. We'll be right back after the break. Change the future of medicine from the convenience of home. Join the All of Us Research Program to help improve health research and speed up medical breakthroughs. Visit EssentiaHealth.org slash All of Us to learn more. I'm Nick Bolton, and these days... Hey there. Hey there. It seems everybody has a pair of tactical sunglasses. Good morning. Good morning. But what if you already wear glasses? Then you need these flip-up tack glasses. These new glasses fit right over your existing eyewear to give you all the benefits of our tack glasses while you comfortably wear your regular glasses. Plus, like all tack glasses, flip-up tack glasses feature Bell & Howell light filtering technology that makes invisible objects suddenly become visible. There's just nothing like them on the market today. Here you go, buddy. Thanks, Nick. 
Act now to get your flip-up tack glasses for just $19.99. And we'll even ship them to you free. But wait, order today and you can get a second pair. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-699-7431 or go to flipupglasses.com. That's 1-800-699-7431 or order online at flipupglasses.com. I'm Jim from Jim Peral Construction, a certified TAMCO contractor. What does that mean for you? Tamco's full line of roofing and decking products allow me to offer the best options to homeowners. The average contractor can only offer 10 years. At Prawl Construction, we provide a full coverage, 15-year labor and material warranty on residential and commercial buildings. Nobody can offer a better warranty than this. Give us a call today to find out what Jim Prawl Construction and Tamco can do for you. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Anthony Mack, coming up on CBS 3, we have reporters all over the Northland gathering the stories that matter to you. UMD announces the move-in date has delayed, as well as undergrad classes to be held online for the first two weeks. How that affects students coming up. Men's Wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Mainstream is your wedding headquarters. Downtown Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park. Let's take a quick look at today's top stories and a peek at what's coming up at 6. Wisconsin's governor called in the National Guard to keep the peace in Kenosha after police shot a black man there yesterday. Governor Tony Evers called it a limited mobilization. Guard members will assist local law enforcement. And tonight at 6, today was the first day of classes at Minnesota State Schools, like Lake Superior College and Hibbing Community College. They've been prepping nonstop for the big day since the start of COVID-19. We'll have more on the precautions they're taking tonight at 6. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you back here at 6, and thanks for watching.